John Davison Rockefeller was born in Richmond, New York as the second of six children. John did his share of the regular household chores and earned extra money raising turkeys, selling potatoes and candy, and eventually lending small sums of money to neighbors. When he was a boy, his family moved to Moravia, New York, and in 1851 to Owega, New York, where he attended Owega Academy. In 1853, his family moved to Strongville, Ohio, and he attended Cleveland's Central High School. Then he took a 10-week business course at Folsom Commercial College, where he studied bookkeeping. In September 1855, when Rockefeller was 16, he got his first job as an assistant bookkeeper working for a small produce commission firm called Hewitt and Tuttle. He was particularly adept at calculating transportation costs. As a youth, Rockefeller reportedly said that his two great ambitions were to make $100,000 and to live 100 years. Rockefeller's charitable giving began with his first job as a clerk at age 16 when he gave 6% of his earnings to charity. By the time he was 20, his charity exceeded 10% of his income. Rockefeller attended Baptist churches every Sunday. When traveling, he would often attend services by black Baptist congregations, leaving a substantial donation. In 1859, Rockefeller went into the produce commission business with a partner, Maurice B. Clark, and they raised $4,000 in capital. While his brother Frank fought in the American Civil War, Rockefeller tended his business and hired substitute soldiers. He gave money to the Union cause, as did many rich northerners who avoided combat. Rockefeller was an abolitionist who voted for President Abraham Lincoln and supported the then-new Republican Party. The party switched from foodstuffs to oil, building an oil refinery in 1863 in the Flats, then Cleveland's burgeoning industrial area. The refinery was directly owned by Andrews, Clark & Company, which was composed of Clark and Rockefeller, chemist Samuel Andrews, and M.B. Clark's two brothers. While other refineries would keep the 60% of oil product that became kerosene, but dump the other 40% in rivers and massive sludge piles, Rockefeller remained as thrifty and as efficient as ever. Using the gasoline to fuel the refinery and selling the rest as lubricating oil, petroleum jelly, and paraffin wax, and other byproducts. Rockefeller's refineries hired their own plumbers, cutting the cost of pipe laying in half. Barrels that cost $2.50 each ended up being only 96 cents when Rockefeller bought the wood and had his own coopers built them. In 1864, Rockefeller married Laura Celestia Spellman. They had four daughters and one son together. In February of 1865, Rockefeller bought out the Clark brothers for $72,500 at auction and established the firm of Rockefeller and Andrews. Rockefeller said, It was the day that determined my career. In 1867, Henry M. Flagler became a partner and the firm of Rockefeller, Andrews, and Flagner was established. By 1868, with Rockefeller continuing practices of borrowing and reinvesting profits, that's completely doesn't have anything to do with him. On the 10th of January, 1870, Rockefeller abolished the partnership of Rockefeller, Andrews, and Flagner, forming Standard Oil of Ohio. Rockefeller continued with his self-reinforcing cycle of buying the least efficient competing refiners, improving the efficiency of his operations, pressing for discounts on oil shipments, undercutting his competition, making secret deals, raising investment pools, and buying rivals out. In less than four months in 1872, in what was later known as the Cleveland Conquest, Standard Oil absorbed 22 of its 26 Cleveland competitors. For many of his competitors, Rockefeller had merely to show them his books so they could see what they were up against and then make, and then make them a decent offer. If they refused his offer, he told them he would run them into bankruptcy and then cheaply buy up all their assets at auction. However, he did not intend to eliminate competition entirely. Instead of wanting to eliminate them, Rockefeller saw himself as the industry savior, absorbing the weak and making the industry as a whole stronger, more efficient, and more competitive. In 1877, Standard Oil clashed with Thomas A. Scott, the president of the Pennsylvania Railroad. Rockefeller envisioned pipelines as an alternative transport for oil and began a campaign to build and acquire them. The railroads struck back and formed a subsidiary to buy and build oil refineries and pipelines. Standard countered, held back its shipments, and with the help of other railroads, started a price war that dramatically reduced freight payments and caused labor unrest. Rockefeller prevailed, and the railroad sold its oil interest to Standard. 
In the early 1880s, Rockefeller created one of his most important innovations. Rather than try to influence the price of crude oil directly, Standard Oil had been exercising indirect control by altering oil storage charges to suit market conditions. Rockefeller then ordered the insurance of certificates against the oil against oil stored in its pipelines. These certificates became traded by speculators, thus creating the first oil futures market, which effectively set spot market prices from then on. The National Petroleum Exchange opened in Manhattan, New York in late 1882 to facilitate the trading of oil futures. Standard Oil moved its headquarters to New York City at 26 Broadway, and Rockefeller became a central figure in the city's business community. He bought a residence in 1884 on 54th Street. In 1884, Rockefeller provided major funding for Atlanta Baptist Female Seminary in Atlanta, Georgia, for black women, which became Spelman College. His wife, Laura Spelman Rockefeller, in the 1890s, Rockefeller expanded into iron ore and ore transportation, forcing a collision with steel king, Andrew Carnegie, and their competition became a major subject of the newspapers and cartoonists. He went on a massive buying spree, acquiring leases for crude oil production in Ohio, Indiana, and West Virginia, as the original Pennsylvania oil fields began to play out. Amid the frenetic expansion, Rockefeller began to think of retirement. In 1901, U.S. Steel, then controlled by J.P. Morgan, offered to buy Standard's iron interests as well. In full retirement at age 63, Rockefeller earned over $58 million in investments in 1902. He wrote and published his memoirs beginning in 1908. Critics found his writing to be sanitized and disgenuous and thought that some statements seemed to be at odds with his true business methods. Also in 1901, he founded the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research in New York City. It changed its name to Rockefeller University in 1965. Rockefeller and his son continued to consolidate their oil interests as best they could until New Jersey in 1909 changed its incorporation laws to effectively allow a recreation of the trust in the form of a single holding company. Rockefeller retained his nominal title as president until 1911, and he kept his stock. At last, in 1911, the Supreme Court of the United States found Standard Oil Company of New Jersey in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. By then, the trust still had a 70% market share of the refined oil market, but only 14% of the U.S. crude oil supply. The court ruled that the trust originated in illegal monopoly practices and ordered it to be broken into 34 new companies. These included, among many others, Standard of California, which became Chevron, Standard of New Jersey, which became Exxon, and Standard of New York, which became Mobile. Rockefeller, who, who had rarely sold shares, held over 25% of Standard's stock at the time of the breakout. He and all the other stockholders received proportionate shares in each of the 34 companies. In the after, Rockefeller's control over the oil industry was somewhat reduced, but over the next 10 years, the breakup also proved immensely profitable for him. The company's combined net worth rose fivefold, and Rockefeller's personal wealth jumped to $900 million. Rockefeller's General Education Board, founded in 1903, was established to promote education at all levels everywhere in the country. It was especially active in supporting black schools in the South. Rockefeller also provided financial support to such established Eastern institutes as Yale, Harvard, Columbia, Brown, Bryn Mawr, Wesley, and Vassar. He founded the Rockefeller Sanitary Commission in 1909, an organization that eventually eradicated the hookworm disease, which had long plagued rural areas in the American South. Rockefeller created the Rockefeller Foundation in 1913 to continue and expand the scope of the work of the Sanitary Commission, which was closed in 1915. Rockefeller's fourth main philanthropy, the Laura Spellman Rockefeller Memorial Foundation, was created in 1918. This was later absorbed into the Rockefeller Foundation. In total, Rockefeller donated about $550 million. In his 50s, Rockefeller suffered from moderate depression and digestive troubles. During a stressful period in the 1890s, he developed alopecia, the loss of some or all body hair. By 1901, he had begun wearing toupees. Rockefeller died of arterial sclerosis on May 23, 1937, less than two months shy of his 98th birthday. He was buried in Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland.